infrastructure people here in the audience. And <coughs> I don't know if you've had a chance to look through the plan or think about what Rodney just presented in terms of our five or is it five main mm -hmm. actions of the research section. You know, I think what our committee did, uh, we, we worked together with the metrics that we could obtain uh, that would help support some of what we would include in the document as examples of areas of research strength um, with the understanding that I think that's what we, we believe the university <coughs> will probably need to do is, is in these tough climates of large extramural funding these types of science that the research that can move the institution forward in these rankings um, that we, we need to build upon some existing strengths and figure out ways to identify, support, and evaluate the success of emerging areas of strength. I didn't see in your strategies where you're going to be working with human resources to help with the um, Ability to hire and retain good talent. That's that's in a separate section. Is it? Yeah, we we've added in, as this has gone through. We had in in the research section. We did mention on that mention on needing to align with DOE, needing to reward and allow people to, to move from one focus within their DOE to another. Um, but as this has gotten you know compacted into a I guess a more sturdy document, those have been move to align with where we're actually talking about the development. Um, in our section, we do talk about mentoring as very important and something that needs to be included as an activity within DOEs. Um, we've talked about graduate mentoring as well, both junior faculty and graduate. So I would say creating a culture within the infrastructure components of the university of competitiveness and a culture of um, mutual participation in the process of becoming competitive would be helpful as we move forward uh, rather than a culture of sort of regulation or you know something that might be antagonistic to the goal of being competitive yeah and that's the, the very the first one that's the intent of that is to encourage you know, that idea of we want to be this sort of university how do we get there that's, you know, being competitive in current funding is one way. Being competitive in the productivity of research product or scholarly output uh, is another. And that needs to be determined by the discipline, what's specific to you. But, you know, one of the comments in terms of how do you quantify that is not how many books did you write, but how many people read the book that you wrote. But your point is well taken. I think, you know, it, it actually probably is embodied in that strategy a lot. I think it was written with the intent of promoting, fostering, and you know, telling the community and our stakeholders about the research at the University of Kentucky, making us more competitive, but with that making hopefully some accountability towards the researchers that yes, they understand that this is a competitive environment and these are ways that we can try to evaluate your research and reward it. In terms of the regulatory part, um, you know, we do recognize that that can be an irritation. Um, and so we've talked about how do we how do we try to make support systems work better for our researchers. Um, and at the same time, recognize that if that's what you want, we have to put greater resources into those structures. You can't really demand more if we keep cutting budget in those areas. And so we've recommended several different mechanisms to try to try to get the resources that are required into the things that in our conversations and our conversations with other faculty, you know, were identified as these are things that would help us. Brent kind of touched on it, but I wanted to ask explicitly about uh, the connection to the tenure and promotion process. So you've talked about the shift in single investigator grants and this need to focus on collaborative research. Is that going to play out in the evaluation of assistant professors going up for tenure? There is an explicit statement 
that participation in multidisciplinary awards need to be valued as highly as single investigator in promotion and tenure. Because we know that that is an issue of the culture in some areas. And it's simply not reflecting reality anymore. I forget what it is, but first NIH single investigator average age is now 32. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it's so see, I'm, I'm behind yeah. on that one, though. Yeah, it's so it, it's so simply good. not realistic to say you must have a single investigator award in all cases. It's 43, you know, it's way up there now. I mean, assistant professors, and I don't know how old they are, but <laughs> 43 seems good. So, yeah, that was explicitly addressed. That Rodney, have you um, contacted a lot of the non the non faculty groups, the research support groups? Um, I had one email asking for a metric from one of the early how many grant writing workshops do you deal with commercialization? And I had questions about it. I talked to Jana Cheeseman, and she said write your questions and send them on. I've never heard back ask because I, you know, I said we do grant writing, but another unit does commercialization. You don't want information on what we send out. You want specifics. And I just, as I told you last night in the email, I had not seen very much publicity about this. I didn't know the draft was available online. And as you can see, we're, my office is filling up the, yes. up the last row uh, because I think it is very important for support units to be involved in this process yes. and providing the input. Yes, our group uh, has identified that one of the things we need to do as follow up through this process is meet with, in particular, research support. That hasn't been scheduled yet. Uh, we're barely able to schedule these meetings. <laughs> um, so hopefully as we get a little bit clearer of this time frame, then we will start scheduling those. Um, that is recognized as one of the things we need to do. Um, it's on our list of things to do. Um, and, and really to uh, get feedback and clarity on you know, what are the issues um, that you see as well as to communicate here are some of the issues that have been identified to us. How do these work with what you're doing? We did you have to read to the bottom of those really long emails, the little link on there. <laughs> Our committee as a group met with Dr. Tracy and interviewed him and had a series of questions. And uh, he responded in giving us some information that he had been working on with the deans and the associate deans I guess I must admit, we, we didn't actually meet with any of the research infrastructure groups. Um, but, you know, there's still a lot to do. <laughs> and I think, you know, the metrics and the implementation will be, those groups would be critical, in my opinion, to any of that. So I don't see how we, the thing could go forward without you know, some broader input. But I guess I'd ask, since have, have you had a chance to, to look at the document, and are there key things that you think are, for example, not there that the, <coughs> the infrastructure that need to be in there? Or, or, Look, I have a question something. because there's a whole separate working group on infrastructure. And so this is, is again how the working groups it, it's been so frantic, and we haven't communicated well enough. So my question is. Have, has the specific task force on infrastructure at the university been in touch with you? Because that's another possibility that, of course, there are those that are specific to research, and we should be more engaged, and we can be moving forward. But you'd also think that perhaps the infrastructure working group could, you know, should also. Um, no, so and they they meet right outside our office in the conference room. Um, <laughs> And they have no. One thing I do want to say is for many of you who responded overnight to 
data requests. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we didn't ever intend to do that. Sometimes it just happened. No names. I, I have one question about, um, and you, the document may address this, and I've missed it, and I came in late to the talk, so my apologies if you address this. But um, I work in a core laboratory, and I've noticed that over and over again, I'll be in a conversation with a researcher that says, oh my God, I wish I'd found you two years ago. And these are people who have been on campus for a long time. We're not talking about junior faculty. Um, so I wonder if there's any um, discussion about trying to put together a searchable database of shared use equipment on campus so that researchers can find out what is available. Um, as of right now, everything's so siloed out, and we don't have a way for that to all be searched. We have, a, we have a list of cores by name. It mm -hmm. doesn't say what's in them. Yeah, that's, that's the problem, is that they're looking for it by the name of the type of instrument that they want access to, you know, not necessarily by the... Well, that's a good point. I mean, one of the one of the things we've identified is research communications, both outward, uh, but also inward. And we think, you know, as we, as we go and, you know, the risk with the budget model is continued siloing between colleges. Uh, the cores are, are, are something that we're very concerned about and have stated that those need to be centrally supported and therefore funds need to be made available to do that. So it's not viewed as a tax by whichever college happens to host it. I think in our, in the one research infrastructure strategy, we have research communications, which is rather broad and vague, but I think that was the intent, that just what you're talking about, that we have more communication on campus so that we can enhance research across the institution through these sorts of equipment lists or core descriptions or other facilities that are, you know, can enhance your research that you're right, we're kind of siloed. We're a big institution and we're all busy and, you know, we kind of get in our little world as scientists or researchers or creators of whatever we're doing and we don't get beyond that. And so maybe some of these things would be covered in communications, but I think you're right, there's the specifics. We didn't have the, we didn't detail those specifics. And one of the things that even came up during some of the work we were doing is that we have people looking outside the university for services that are available within the university. Right. And that's shipping funding and F&A out that could be used to support the very core that has them, what they were looking for. Right. And we work with a lot of outside clients, but we also get a lot of phone calls where I feel like a clearinghouse a lot of times. A lot of the phone calls I feel are just, tell me where on campus I can find this. Yeah. And just, think I've been around for long enough that I can go, well, you should contact someone. So. <laughs> they will or won't let you use it. <laughs> so we're lucky to have you. Any other comments from the research infrastructure people that are here that are things in, in the, the, the doc draft that you see that maybe either should be or shouldn't be there or could be? And if you haven't had a chance to read it, because I do believe it it recently came online, the draft. So we understand if you haven't had that opportunity before you came here today. So if you go back and, and perhaps we could blast again to with the working group announcements now, the, the draft link, um, and then I'd say you're welcome to provide email feedback um, to either Rodney or myself or any of our committee members that are within your college or domain. Um, and it will be forwarded and incorporated into the general feedback that we use to. And we do, you know, the more specific you are, the more helpful it is. Um, again, the I don't like it is not, <laughs> it, we can't do much with that. Um, but in, in, in particular, as Lisa said, if you see something that you've identified, please do let us know. Can you make sure the actual draft link? Because I was on the website even yesterday. So we'll make sure that, that we get one to you that you can find. Yeah, again, if you can, I don't know where my little notebook went, but if you can make sure to put it down your email address, I'll email you the link so you can just go straight to it. Any other comments or feedback? <laughs> I have a question. Um, 
question. Um, what's your time frame for receiving feedback? What's, at what point is it going to be etched in stone, so to speak? Can you all comment on that? I know that we've been asked as, as working groups to, to try to wrap up some of our initial work um, with, with a May deadline. We're aiming for a really strong draft by the middle of May. So sooner than later. Sooner than later, please. But I think that this is going to continue to evolve and be worked on um, over the next perhaps few months. I'm not real sure of the timeline there. But um, I'd say the sooner the better. I think one of the things that's, that's come across in the process that's going to be different with this is that this is not going to be a sacred document. This will continue to be as we move through what's covered under the document. Sorry, did I just say something about yeah. previous yeah. question about <laughs> the goal of it? I mean, right now it's a list. It's sort of yeah. a thing that would be nice if someone didn't say. Sure. But yeah. when is it more in the implementation process in the future that how to make these things happen and who's going to do it? Yes, definitely. And I think even, you know, right our right group, you know, we're, we're, we're a group of faculty, we're and staff, we're people like you. Uh, our knowledge and understanding of the resources that would be needed to to do some of these things is, is just like yours. And so I think that is a big question is once we get into specifics of, of the implementation then obviously resources and things that would be needed to get us to these targets or goals um, are a big question. But in the, in, in the examples that we've seen of, of how the implementation will be put together, it does have timelines, deliverables, who's responsible, um, so and what's needed. It just obviously hasn't been flushed out because this is still a draft. Questions? Anything else? All right. Thank you all Thank for coming. Thank you all very, very much.